Hi there and welcome to my June solar update for 2022. The big news this month is my Give Energy battery has finally arrived. Uh, it's taken a while. It's actually taken about, I'd say, four and a half months from ordering uh, to actually get it in my house and around two and a half months after the solar was installed. So it's been good in a way because I've had two and a half months of just having solar on its own just to see how that's been working um, and how that works and then obviously now the battery's been installed obviously we're using a lot less electricity as well and the battery really has just been plain sailing um, it's been just getting on with the job it was an eight kilowatt battery that I ordered and it weighed about 75 kilos uh, when I helped bring it in from the van outside on a dolly, sort of lifting it over the doorways uh, uh, all the way to the garage where it was finally mounted um, on the wall, slightly off the floor for, for air circulation purposes. And uh, it was actually mounted straight onto a breeze block wall, believe it or not. But the 75 kilo weight has been fine really on the wall. It took about two hours to install it. Now, please remember that the AC inverter that I've already got was already installed. It just had a lot of extra wires and things needed to be installed. And obviously there was problems with kind of getting apps uh, installed and making sure that the thing was running properly and sort of charging up and discharging as well. But it was about two hours overall for the install once I'd actually got it on a sort of Saturday morning. Uh, so it, just to say the inverter actually for the AC inverter that I've got because I've got solar edge on the PV side and the give energy uh, three kilowatt uh, AC inverter on the other side for the battery. It does get hot, it does get warm uh, when it's being topped up, when it's being charged. So uh, just something to know but in the garage. It's not a problem because it's nice and dark and cool in there anyway. Right, so on with the stats. I'll talk a little bit more about the battery and the Give Energy kind of dashboard and thing things at the end of the video. But really, I want to get on now and talk to you about June's stats. June, well, it's been a mixed month. There's been an odd few bad days there, as you can see on the chart, but not many. It's been pretty good kind of days with the average of sort of 20 kilowatts a day, really, on average. If we just kind of compare that to... Um, May really it's quite strange because June was 783 kilowatts whereas May was only about 50 less at about 730 and April was very similar around 730 as well so I'd expected I was kind of expecting June to be a bit higher on this bar chart but it's not it's it's good in a way because obviously that means either June was low or April was really good uh, but be interesting to see what July is going to be. So very similar between those three months of April, May and June. Right, so this is the performance history graph from the My Energy app. Now you can see here the uh, where the red is the electricity that I imported and the yellow is the electricity I exported and the green is the solar um, PV generation. So we imported uh, 84 kilowatts exported 273 and consumed 473. Now what you can see here that's quite interesting is the red uh, import from the grid. Now as, as I said the battery was installed on the 11th of June so if we take it from the kind of 12th of June there you can see where from the 12th of June the import actually stops. So that's when the battery really took over. So goodbye to all that kind of importing from the grid. Uh, through the night and uh, in the evening obviously when there was no sun the only blip you can see there is on about the kind of 19th or 18th and 19th of June where there's a blip of red that was a really weird day it was two days where there was very little sun a lot of rain um, where I am and dark clouds so what happened was there wasn't enough solar to recharge the battery uh, we did heat the hot I don't know if we even heat the hot water actually it was a really weird couple of days um, so the battery didn't recharge and it ran um, kind of all of the overnight and the next day uh, until about kind of 5 6 p.m in the evening and then it gave up and it was depleted completely and then we had to go on to the grid for that evening uh, and the next through the night 
until the next morning when the actual sun came out at kind of seven, eight in the morning and the solar started to replenish the battery. So that was the only couple of days where the battery actually ran out because we had two bad days of weather, one after the other. Whereas you can see export kind of continued throughout the month, even though we had the battery. Uh, obviously we had to charge the battery, so there should have been less export really throughout the month. Um, but it seems like it was fairly consistent, even though we'd got a battery to charge that was eight kilowatts as well. Uh, the battery is not being fully depleted through the night, which is good. We still wake up in the morning. It varies, but we still got about 35% left on the battery uh, before it starts getting charged again the next morning from solar. Uh, the Eddie's been really good as usual. Um, it just does its job. It's been really brilliant. As I say, we only had about one day where I don't think the hot water was heated due to the due to that bad weather. So 138 kilowatts uh, was used by the Eddie. As you can see there in the graph, you know, every day it kind of does its job to heat the hot water back up again. Uh, this is just a graph taken from the dashboard uh, through the browser of the Hypervolt uh, for the EV charger. We did use it a little bit in June, um, only about 11 kind of kilowatts uh, and that was all uh, solar generated. So we did also get a little bit of charge into the car as well through solar. When it was here, obviously if it was here and not at work, at the workplace it would have had more solar probably. Uh, but that was mainly just the odd weekend day uh, when it was sunny and there was kind of excess and the battery had been fully charged and the hot water had been heated. Uh, so that was what was kind of left over. Instead of exporting, we, we put some in the car. So this is the Octopus uh, dashboard in the browser, uh, which gives me even more stats from, for my uh, smart meter. So the top section graph is what we've exported uh, through the month of June. And this is the sort of data that I'm using for that. So a pretty good month, couple of days where we didn't export anything uh, or hardly anything. Obviously there was those couple of bad rainy days around the kind of 18th, 19th, where we hardly exported anything. They go on the 18th, um, but other days have not been too bad and obviously looked like there wasn't much exported on those days either at the beginning of the month on those couple of days. So overall monthly um, on the month side for June, we actually exported 287 kilowatts as shown there by the graph. So the bottom graph is the electricity that we've consumed from the grid. So as you can see there, as I showed you previously on the My Energy app, once the battery had come in, we were kind of, well, as I say, it stopped. We didn't obviously import much at all. Um, what we were using with solar panels, we were probably using traditionally without any solar panels or anything, we would consume about 14 kilowatts a day. And with the solar panels, we found ourselves consuming kind of about five to six kilowatts a day. Obviously, that was when the sun wasn't shining. So that was through the night and in the evenings. And then as soon as you can see there, the battery arrived. Um, the values from six kilowatts went right down um, to mainly about a third of a kilowatt, I would say, per day. There's a cut, there's a little blip there in the middle. I've, I've mentioned this several times there when it was really cloudy and the battery ran out and we had to use um, the grid. But other than that, we're not completely off grid. What seems to happen is with the uh, Give Energy battery is that it can take kind of a few seconds to kick in if you're pulling more power um, than say the solar is giving you or, uh, you know, when you turn power on and off, one minute you might be using a little bit from the grid for a few seconds. And you can see that through the smart meter that I've got in the kitchen. Uh, and other times you'll kind of be exporting a little bit when you don't need to be. So the setting is kind of eco on the Give Energy battery and it kind of, it kind of works itself out, but it's not instant. So whenever you pull power from say like an oven or a kettle, it's not instant from the battery. You do end up using a tiny little bit from the grid, 
And what those tiny little bits from the grid have kind of added up to, that you can see along the bottom of those that graph, is about a third of a kilowatt per day, I would say. And at the moment, we're on kind of 29 pence a kilowatt. So still using kind of 10 pence a day of electricity. But obviously, we're exporting a bit as well. So that's kind of being covered. So let's look at some numbers then for June. Um, grid import, we imported 75 kilowatts for the whole month. Obviously, remember, the battery only came on the 11th or 12th of June. So we good, did have a good sort of 10 days of solar only at the beginning of the month. Um, so they were priced at 29 pence. So roughly 21.75 in pounds for that month is what we imported from the grid. Uh, we exported 287 at seven and a half pence on octopus outgoing or outgoing octopus uh, which comes up to adds up to 21.53 so the numbers are very similar so the electric spend in the end was 22 pence overall for the month uh, obviously that doesn't include the standing charge um, which we all have to pay anyway but you know that heated the hot water we didn't use any gas the boilers turned off for heating and it's turned off for the hot water because we're using the eddy. Um, although we obviously are still paying, again, the gas standing charge. We ran the house, obviously, as well. And as you saw from the hypervolt, we put a little bit of charge in the car as well. So all in all, for that month, I'm pretty happy. Obviously, we could have probably been making money if we'd uh, have had the battery for the full month. So we just need to get the stats for July 2022 now, next month, to see uh, what the numbers look like then. Right, so that's it for that part of the video. Let's go back and just have a quick look at the Give Energy uh, battery dashboard if you're interested. Uh, it's a really nice uh, dashboard. Obviously, there's the Give Energy app as well. Uh, but I like you looking at the browser sometimes when I'm working on my PC just to see what's going on. There's so much data in here. I mean, it's crazy, really. Obviously, this is the main screen. It's got a lovely graphic showing the power coming from the solar uh, into the um, house or the uh, energy going to the battery, as you can see as well. It shows you if there's power coming to and from the grid and you can kind of hover over these uh, different icons and it will show you what's going on. We've got the kind of the main numbers at the top as well, showing you what's coming in from solar, uh, what the house is using and what the battery charge is at and what state it's at. There's loads of power graphs on the left on the top hand, left hand side at the top. Um, you can get information on your inverter. You can get the weather forecast as well. Um, you can also add your smart tariffs in there for pricings. You can get the weather, as I showed, drop down there, drop down from the clouds. And something I've just added today, actually, while I've been doing this video, is the uh, solar forecasting predictions, uh, which were via an API, which was free to use. And I'll probably do a different video on that if you want to add that to your kind of Give Energy dashboard. Uh, another video I'm actually going to do as well is I've actually managed to put a CT clamp on the Give Energy uh, live feed. Um, and I've managed to now obviously see the Give Energy um, battery uh, in the My Energy app. I've done it previously with the Hypervolt. So if you want to see that video, uh, have a look here. I'll put that in the description as well below. Uh, but I'm going to do another video as well about how to set the uh, My Energy app up so that you can see power uh, going to your Give Energy battery and the settings that you need to make either in your Zappy or in your Eddy. So look out for that one as well. Uh, but overall, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. I'll be back next month with July as well and some more videos in between. Uh, if you liked the video, give us a like um, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, of course. See you soon.